So we know that there are five main gradients in our faith as it relates to the laws that we practice as Muslims. Certain things are obligations. And for a person who has the means, has the uh, health, has the ability to get married, it becomes an obligation upon them to get married if they are committing haram in place of that which is halal. So if a person has the means to get married, the opportunity to get married, but they choose to live a sinful lifestyle, it becomes wajib upon them, compulsory upon them to stop that sinful lifestyle and to begin a halal lifestyle under the dictates of marital law. That they should do the marriage and end the sinful practice. The second level is where it becomes recommended. Somebody is not doing that which is haram, but now they have the means and they are able to get married and they are able to find the right person, but for whatever reason they haven't. It is highly desirable, it is mandub or it is mustahab for them to get married as soon as possible. And if they get married, they are rewarded for it, but in that point where they're not yet married, they're not earning any sin between them and Allah. The fourth, which is opposite to that, which is makruh, somebody who doesn't have the means and is not in a place where they are ready to get married, but they feel that they want to get married and really they know that they're not prepared for it, so it is undesirable for them to get married. It is better for them not to get married until they have met the conditions that makes their marriage something that will be valid, that they have the ability to support themselves and the family of that they are going to take on and that they have the approvals that are necessary for that to be done. It becomes undesirable for someone to get into a marital situation that they do not know whether they will be able to fulfill the rights in it. And that could be something that affects people, for example, who are seeking, uh, uh, thinking of taking on a second partner or looking after responsibility of someone financially that they may not have the means before. It becomes something that is makruh. Number four, is to be married to someone as an act of udwan, to marry someone so that you are hindering them from progress of life, that you're going to keep someone in marriage just to subjugate them and not let them marry somebody else. And subhanAllah, some men are very tyrannical in this kind of perspective and the laws of Islam have come to be able to separate them from those who they are seeking to oppress them. It becomes haram for an individual to take somebody in holy matrimony with a sinful intent or to do it in a sinful means. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us from that. Allahumma ameen. What are some of the prerequisites for the nikah to be valid? Well, the fundamental prerequisite across all of the opinions of the scholars that is taken from the Quran and the Sunnah is the ijab and qabul, that there is a proposal that is put forward and there is an acceptance by the other party. Usually we recommend that the proposal is put forward by the father or the wali, the responsible person for the female, for the bride-to-be, and that the acceptance is something that is done by the person who is going to take on that burden of responsibility to be qawwam and established in being uh, uh, financially responsible, emotionally responsible, physically responsible for the new wife that they betrothed in marriage. The proposal from one partner can also be from the male to the female, but I believe that if the family of the female are, are present and involved, that they can put this offer, do you accept, uh, do you accept the responsibility of taking my daughter, taking my sister, taking someone who is a part of my duty of care, that I have duty of care to them into your fold and into the responsibility, uh, into your um, sphere of influence. And then there is the qabul, the acceptance that is added to that. The components of an Islamic marriage are uh, important for us to also understand. How do we know if a marriage is valid? What are the considerations that make a marriage valid in Islam? Well, the first component is consent. And that consent is normally given verbally and in writing. And it can be also authorized through a representative. Uh, but there has to be consent that does not have any coercion, that does not have any qahr, any, any force that the man and the woman are not obligated to marry each other and that one is not forced. And there's the famous hadith of Al-Khansa, 
Al-Ansari radiallahu anha wa ardaha, she said that her father had forced her to marry uh, his nephew or, or her cousin and she came to the Prophet Sallallahu and she said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I do not want to marry him. And the Prophet said, Perhaps he would be a good match for you. And she said, Second time, Oh Messenger of Allah, I do not want to marry this man. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ فَالنِّكَاحُ بَاطِلْ That marriage did not be valid if, if it was to be ordered upon you. Uh, and you can choose the one that you wish to choose.